Keith, thanks very much for, for joining us this morning. You've seen several cycles there um, at, at Patreon, Keith. Um, what's your sense of this one and, and the types of opportunities that, it, that may come with it? Uh, this one is, uh, is a bit trickier, right? Because it comes on the back of a very low rate environment already. When the virus hit, it took a lot of people by surprise. I mean, we've seen SARS before. And so we knew how bad it could be, but we didn't know the extent of this at, at all. Um, so I think this, this is very different because obviously it's, a, it's essentially a black swan shock. And the problem with this particular situation is that it's kind of a rolling shock, right? So we had the, the first wave, complete lockdown, total freak out, and then it recovered, right? And then you have the second wave, which is the variant, and that has a yet another effect. Um, so assuming everything goes uh, as expected right now, which is that the vaccine's rolling out and the vaccine works and everything's fine, um, what we're going to see is a, is a pretty significant rebound. I mean, you have, a, you have a situation where China has essentially fully recovered. You have the U.S., despite all the challenges America has, it's, it's doing pretty well. So Europe should do, do much better. And in fact, Goldman Sachs has come out with a forecast that's actually ahead of consensus, which is quite significant. So the difference this time is that you didn't have a lot of leverage going into the system. So the amount of distressed credit opportunities that are real estate backed are less. Um, but uh, you have a question of how your economy is going to grow over the next couple of years. Uh, and that starts with a, a world of, of less supply, uh, depending upon the asset class. So it's a much trickier cycle, I would say, this time than in previous cycles. There's a lot of discussion, Keith, around um, the pandemic accelerating existing trends. How do you see that impacting the different real estate sectors, particularly looking at Europe? Yeah, I, I think it you know, really depends on the asset class. So, so if you take your, so your scale, you know, on one extreme, you might have logistics and the other extreme, you probably have closed end shopping centers. So, you know, if you look at logistics, it's, it's obviously doing very well. And the pandemic has accelerated that. Uh, it, there's no question that the demand for logistics space is off the charts. There's simply not a lot of supply. Uh, and the big groups like Amazon and, and, and groups that feed into Amazon are, are, are sucking up supply dramatically. So logistics is, is a very interesting place. It's hard to make money there for an opportunistic fund like us because it is very expensive and everybody knows about it, right? The other extreme, you have closed in shopping centers and closed in shopping centers were already in trouble going into the pandemic, right? So we had this issue with CBAs, we had the issue with online retail that was growing and that's just simply all accelerated dramatically. Um, and, and as a result of that, uh, you're just seeing this huge fall off in, in retail. Uh, so it's very difficult to price and to own closed in shopping centers because you're not really quite sure what's going to happen. Uh, and unless you have an alternative use, it's obvious the duration risk of that plan is, is quite difficult to, to underwrite. So, so I would say that's the other extreme. And then in the middle, you have uh, getting closer to the logistics side is residential, right? Residential has done very, very well, partially on the back of stamp duty savings, but also just simply across Europe, uh, just cheap rates. I mean, it is very, very cheap to borrow money. So house prices and, and residential has proven to be a, a store of wealth, let's say. But it's interesting, and therefore, if you could feed into that sort of mid-market demand, which is what we like, it uh, could be really exciting. And then on the other side, going back to that retail side, you have uh, hotels. So hospitality has clearly been affected by the pandemic. Europe is affected a little bit more than the US in that we rely heavily on airplanes, right? So if we can't fly between, uh, between countries uh, or it's hard to fly between countries and why do it? And therefore it's very hard to figure out when business travel will kickstart. And hospitality divides into many categories. You have leisure hospitality, but you also have business led or urban led hospitality. And that also breaks out into conference room business and non-conference. You have one, you have this dynamic of airplane travel and when will that return? And secondly, you have this dynamic of conference centers and conferences. Will they come back? And when will they come back? So we bought the Hotel Arts in, in after 9-11 uh, and everyone said the Americans would never travel again. And within a year, they were booming, right? So uh, I would suspect, you know, the average group out there thinks it's somewhere between 2023 and 2025 is the years that the hotel market should return. I think it's gonna be a bit better than that, but it's still out there. So the pricing for hospitality has to reflect the duration risk depending upon, of course, um, the hotel product. And kind of dead in the middle between those ranges is office. And office is really divided into kind of offices that are lower tier buildings, three-story, four-story, five-story buildings uh, in reasonably good, good, good locations, 
offices in highly dense residential areas, which serve a purpose, uh, as well as towers like in the city and and in, in urban dead center urban. And towers are really tricky because not only do you don't really know what's going to happen because of the virus and when will people return, but you also have this dynamic of the logistics associated with kind of getting up in the space, which really relates to the first point. If you're trying to figure out what you're going to do, uh, you know, you're going to spend 40 minutes commuting and 30 minutes to get on a lift. It's kind of a hard one. You know, the second aspect of that from an investor is office towers are quite big. So the quantum of money that you have to risk is significant. So you tend to think that a more interesting opportunity might be in what America calls suburban space. Here, you know, it's a mixed bag. Uh, and, and that is interesting. I mean, the demand is significant. So we like that space uh, uh, as well. In summary, you know, the pandemic has affected each property class a bit differently. Uh, but in general, the, the clear question of the pandemic is how long does it take for things to return? What is the duration that you have to underwrite in that investment? Really interesting, uh, Keith, to, to get your views on this. Thanks very much for joining us. Sure. Thank you again. I appreciate it.